Justin had such an impact on his many beloved friends, teammates, co-workers of all ages, and people in the community. My heart breaks for their pain and trauma as well. Justin was happy, humble, hardworking, grateful, stylish, funny, smart, loving, thoughtful, and empathic. He never complained and always made time to lift others up, bringing out the best in everyone who knew and loved him. He didn't deserve to die this way. Justin was a lettered athlete, a top honor student, and lived by the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. He was so excited to graduate and planned on attending Oakland University. We did a tour in the fall of 2021 and we talked about his plans to major in business. He wanted to move out with his friends and even considered getting a real estate license. He was so motivated and focused. His future was so bright and full of possibilities. Justin would have been an amazing father. Children loved him and gravitated toward his big heart. He was such a gentleman and so very loving towards me and all women, never letting me pump my own gas or hold my own door. He will always be my little sweetheart. Justin spent his final moments protecting Keegan and saved six more lives with his gift or organ donation. May his light and legacy live on forever. Now, Your Honor, I would like to share what I would like the shooter to know. You may have ended Justin's life on this plane, but you did not in any way affect his soul. You don't have the power to do that. You may have caused the pain and terror as you intended to do, but you did not destroy us. There is more love and light in this world because of the legacies of Justin Tate, Hannah, and Madison. I don't focus on hating you, but I also don't feel a drop of pity towards you. I don't feel anything towards you. You're nothing to me, you don't even exist. While you rot in jail, we will push on and we will do so many good things in the world, spreading so much love and kindness in honor of our angels. You are facing the consequences of your actions here in this court of law, but you will also face your demons in the afterlife, and there is no escaping that. I pray that you serve as a deterrent and as an example for other lost souls who seek fame by taking innocent lives. You didn't win. You're not famous. It didn't turn out as you had hoped. The media will forget about you. They will move on. I know you're miserable and it's only going to get worse as the reality does set in. But we are only going to get better. More healed, more loved and more loving towards others, more peaceful and more full of grace. And one last thing I do want you to know, if you were that lonely, that miserable, that lost, and you really needed a friend, Justin would have been your friend if you had only asked him. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And also, I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you for your statements this morning. Again, I know that's not easy to do, especially in a packed courtroom. So thank you very much for being here now. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You're with Steve and Reynas and Juliana, Hannah's father and sister. Thank you. Is there going to be a minor involved? No, sir. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Could you please tell me your name? Um, I'm Raina St. Juliana. Thank you. And sir, what is your name for the record as well? Steve St. Juliana. Thank you. And is there a statement you wish to share with the court this morning? Uh, yes. I have mine and then my our mother's as well. Thank I, St. Juliana. Absolutely. You may proceed. So this is our mom's 
statement. Hannah was the best version of me. We were similar in the things that we liked and the things we didn't like. She loved doing fun things and making things fun for those around her. On the days I was not feeling good, Hannah would make sure to put a drink next to my pillow, cook for the family, and not only do the dishes, but also make the kitchen super clean, just how she knew I liked it. Almost all Christmas presents were Hannah's ideas because she knew what everyone in our family liked. When we went shopping for it together, our carts would be always come back brimming to the top. To the, oh my God, our carts would always come back brimming to the top. Even when Noah was little, she adored him from the start. She would make sure to stay up late and hide the elf on the shelf creatively for him to find in the morning. She would practice soccer with him. She would always pay attention and take care of him. And with her older sister, they became best friends. Together, the both of them gave Noah advice to help him become a wonderful person. Hannah was always thinking about our family and always extended those thoughts to everyone around her as well. She lifted all of our spirits. She was going to dress up, fall in love, go on dates, go to college, get married, start a family, take a bunch of vacations, eat a ton of good food, one day live near me and I would watch her kids. And for Christmas, everyone would meet at Hannah's house and from there on, she was always going to bring her family together. On that day, not only was my loving daughter's life taken, but all of my family's future was taken as well. Since that day, all of our lives have drastically changed. Now, in my daily life, whenever I see a pair of sisters, I am sad. When I see other siblings getting along, I am sad. When I see other mothers and daughters, I am sad. When I see other families having a good time, I am sad. When I see other her age, others her age having fun, I am sad. Every moment, every day, every experience, I think of Hannah and I am sad. Anything I do, even when I have a good moment, I am sad. I am sad in the spring, in the summer, in the fall, in the winter, during Easter, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and all holidays. Even when I have a happy moment, all I think about is if Hannah were here and it blankets everything in sadness and heartbreak. To make sure that I don't sink any more into the sadness, I try not to pay attention to my surroundings. Even having to complete my daily tasks each day makes my heart hurt. It takes everything out of me to ensure that the last thought of me doesn't break. On that day when my special Hana was taken from us, we fell to our lowest point, hit the darkest bottom we didn't even know existed. To live a life without Hana, our brightest light. Having to continue carrying on the carrying the most soul-crushing pain forever. For the rest of our lives, we have to live our worst nightmare. When I think of Hana, the phrase sad does not capture the pain I feel or the way my whole heart aches. So my rare moments of relief are times when I don't have to think about her. On top of the daughter, I love being gone. When I remember my memories with Hana, it feels like a stab to my heart and my tears will not stop falling. It is unfair that thinking about Hana is so excru excruciating, it makes my crying endless. I know that no amount of crying will bring Hana back, so I breathe in and out trying to hold my heart together. But I know that the days my eyes are dry will never come. By doing just enough to scrape by in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, on sunny days, rainy days, cloudy days, we continue just surviving each day. So this is how we will continue to be surviving, not living. I am so fe fearful of another irreplaceable, important person suddenly being taken away right in front of me. I send off my family scared to death each day. Every night I wish that the morning wouldn't come. Every day I think about how nice it would be if I could stop time and stop thinking. For us, our peaceful, happy days with Hana will never be again. And then, this is my impact statement. I have rewritten this countless of times, and it is never enough. I cannot convey my thoughts into words, nor share even a fraction of my feelings since losing Hana. To be honest, I have not fully faced my emotions myself. How can I? Hana is the one I went to for the little things, the big things, and all of the in-betweens. Hana is my little sister. She is my other half, my favorite person. 
She completes me, and there's not a single soul I could love more than Hannah. There is not a moment that goes by that I don't think about her. It is unfair to even confine her murder into just the word lost. I never hear her footsteps coming up the stairs anymore. Her bright lights in her room are never on, which also reflects the dull dullness of our house now. I don't see her napping on the couch, cooking downstairs with my mom, or making TikToks with Noah. The empty seat at the dining table is the loudest silence I have ever heard. And without Hannah in the middle between Noah and I, it emphasizes the space between us. I was decorating the Christmas tree with Hannah in 2021 when I thought to myself, I can't wait for when it's her house that we host the holidays at. I was wondering which clothes I could get away with stealing from her closet when I headed off to college. Wondered if her boyfriend would look like my boyfriend because our tastes and guys were so similar. I was going to finally get my license so we could go thrifting together. If I'm bored in school, I can always just text Hannah to go on a walk together. If I couldn't remember a song, it's okay because Hannah would remember it. We were going to be the best duel on the lacrosse field. One look and she knows what I'm thinking. One switch Japanese and we get to talk in our own little world. She'll speak at the wedding, at my wedding as the maid of honor and I at hers. With Hana by my side, there's nothing I can't do. Instead of speaking at her wedding, I spoke at her funeral. Instead of fishtailing her hair for a game, I curled her hair in a casket. Doesn't matter if I go to her room to steal her clothes, show her an outfit, or ask for advice. I am met with silence and darkness. I pushed off getting my license because what was the point? She's not here to sit in the passenger seat. I couldn't go back to school and finish my high school years. I'd see all of Hannah's classmates, my classmates, get their homecoming, their sports games, their prom, and their graduation when Hannah doesn't. I refuse to decorate the Christmas tree. That is what we do with Hannah. My brother asked me to still continue our traditions, but I can't. I can't be a good sister for him because that is what Hannah and I did together. Each day is just going through the motions because apparently we're still supposed to go on. I hate it. I never asked for it. I never want to accept it. Loving Hannah shouldn't be this painful and life isn't supposed to be this paralyzing. I am scared of forgetting Hannah. I want my hippocampus to be filled with Hana and Hana only. I don't need new memories, I just want to keep the ones I have. I don't want to meet new people because they aren't Hana. I don't want to wake up in the morning because Hana's not here. I don't want to be happy, Hana is my happy. In my family, we can't say to each other that we miss Hana, even though we feel it in every atom of our body. We love her too much and those words are too hard. Because if we say that out loud to each other, we all have to face the fact that we have to miss her forever. It's not an instance where we can wait for her to come back. It is the rest of our lifetime without her. I thought, of course, because we cannot even bear to share our pain with each other, we also want with those around us, which is why people can ask us how we are doing. If they knew that it doesn't get better, they would never ask that. What I realized is that it seems that they forgot what we were like with Hana. Looking back at pictures, I have not seen my dad smile like that where joy radiates off of him. I haven't seen Noah so alive without the bags under his eyes. And I haven't seen my mom so carefree without holding her breath every second. There are no words to capture her incandescence, humor, thoughtfulness, wit, kindness, or loyalty. Hana is always there to support you, hear you, see you. You'd know that. Throwing your head back and laughing at the stupid comment Hana made, you have to feel it. Your mood brightening because of Hana's laughter, you have to hear it. Her colorful converse, gold jewelry, fun socks, perfect nails, you have to see it. Her kindness was in abundance. She recognizes the smallest details. Her love is unconditional. The warmth she wraps you in is the warmth I cannot live without. I do not want to live without Hana. She brought out the best in all of us. She truly brought out the best in me. So I'm sorry to everyone who now never gets to meet her because being robbed of that is a tragedy in itself. To know Hana is the greatest gift in life. I'm sorry for everyone who knows her because trying to meet someone like that again is impossible. I look for Hana in everyone I meet, every place I go. I know how draining that is when you're met with disappointment every time. I'm sorry to all of those who only know me without her. 
Me without Hana is someone I cannot even recognize. I am so sorry, Hana, for leaving that building that day. That is, that is and forever will be my biggest mistake and my biggest regret. I am sorry that I cannot make you feel even a fraction of the world without Hana. If I could, the shooter would be dead. A creature who left Hana lying in her own pool of blood, crying in pain, who went to go shoot her again, does not deserve to take another breath. His parents will never see the light of day. Oxford District employees would be fully held accountable and we would all be working on a time machine. I want you to remember when you were 14. Can you even? It's such a young age. I want you to think about everything that came after 14. Everything Hannah doesn't ever get to experience. She was not supposed to be shot and killed not even three months after starting her first day of high school. She was supposed to grow old just as we all are right now. Experience the beauty of life, not feel its cruelty. The least that can be done for Hannah is for it to be ruled life without parole. There is no justice that will ever be enough. However, the first step is to ensure that he never has a chance to take away another life and destroy families ever again.